Stormwater 360's Chamber Max system has been designed to economically collect, detain, retain and infiltrate stormwater runoff. The Chamber Max system maximises available land for development and can support traffic loading for installation under car parks and roadways. This short video will show the procedures for installation of the Chamber Max system. As each site has a unique design, it is important to follow the engineering project drawings as designed and sealed by a registered professional engineer. It is also a requirement that all workers on site are suitably inducted and abide by the appropriate health and safety procedures. Pre-construction meeting. Firstly, it is important to conduct a pre-construction meeting with the supplier of the system, the general contractor, subcontractors and the project engineer. This meeting will provide details of the product and establish all steps of the installation, including any site-specific requirements. Foundation Construct the foundation, ensuring that it can support the weight of all elements of the design that is, the loading of the chambers and adjacent backfill. Integrity of the construction must be maintained throughout. The foundation must be constructed on a suitable subgrade of a minimum 150 kPa bearing capacity. Unstable soils should either be replaced or supported by a tensor grid or similar to the satisfaction of the engineer. The minimum excavation depth, which is the height of the base of the excavation or subgrade, to the underside of the pavement is 1.38 metres for Class A loading and 1.5 metres for Class D loading. At least an extra 305 millimetres of perimeter excavation is required for a proper fit and adequate compaction. The foundation is typically graded to a uniform and stable level. If water is present throughout the construction process, it must be removed. In this case, it may be preferable to grade the foundation so it slopes slightly to one end of the system, allowing for excess water to drain. In situ trench walls. It is important that the trench walls are capable of supporting the load of the system. If not, then the integrity of the system can be compromised. Conduct a simple soil pressure check using the applied loads to determine the limits of excavation beyond the outer edge of the chambers. Placement of the liner and geotextile. A geotextile is used to separate the excavation perimeter and the adjacent backfill zones. For sealed systems, a liner is placed in between two layers of the geotextile. For detention and retention applications, either polypropylene or polyethylene liners, typically 1 to 1.5 millimetres thick, can be used to seal the structure. A layer of non-woven geotextile with a typical weight of 200 to 340 grams per square metre is installed either side of the liner for protection. As a minimum, wrap the walls and base of the structure with a non-woven geotextile to help prevent soil migration. This is suitable for infiltration applications. Bedding. Backfill is paramount to the structural integrity of any buried structure. The chamber max system typically has four backfill zones. These are bedding zone, embedment backfill zone, initial backfill zone, general backfill. The backfill specification is detailed on the engineering plans and the client or installer must ensure they comply with the guidelines. Avoid using heavy machinery on the bedding material, as this will cause excessive soil compaction. To allow for proper placement of chambers, grade the base to a smooth and uniform level. Layout of the chamber segments. Each chamber max row is comprised of start, middle and end chambers. Labels on the start and end chambers distinguish them from each other. The start and end chambers have integrated end walls which eliminate the risk of end cap failure whilst reducing installation time. The chambers are relatively lightweight, which means they can be carried by hand for easy placement. The maximum weight of a chamber is 38 kilograms. Following the engineering plans, temporarily lay out the chamber segments, beginning with the start chamber for each row. A minimum distance of 130 or 150 millimeters is required between each row at all times. 
be sure to check the engineering plans. At the first joint, place the last corrugation of the downstream chamber over the last corrugation of the upstream chamber segment. Then continue this process down the entire row, which is finished with placement of the end chamber. Inspection viewports. The engineering plans will identify which chambers need to have a 100 mm diameter hole cut into the reinforced circular port. Then install an inspection port with a riser pipe, ensuring it will not be crushed when the backfill is returned. Concrete should not be attached to the riser pipe. Backfill. The material to be used for the embedment zone shall be free draining, clean, crushed, angular stone 20 to 50 millimeters in size. Place the stones in even lifts between each row of chambers. Then over the top, like the level of stones below the chambers, the level above the crown of the chambers should be compacted to a minimum depth of 152 millimeters. It is important to separate the embedment backfill zone from the initial backfill zone for retention applications, so a non-woven geotextile can be used. The initial backfill zone shall be granular, well-graded material, consisting of stone, gravel or sand, conforming to AASHTO soil classification A1, A2 or A3. A layer of general backfill material is then placed. Any suitable native or general backfill can be used and should be placed in accordance with the engineering plans. The final step is to re-establish the surface of the site. In this case, it will become general parkland that will also be used as car park. Road base, concrete or asphalt may also be used. So there you have it, an overview of the installation of Stormwater 360's Chamber Max system. For more information on the installation guidelines, please refer to the website www.stormwater360.com.au or contact your local Stormwater 360 representative.